Hi folks, we are going to watch one of the games from the friendly open cut. This is event 5 and the first game that is going to be played is the game between Gabriel and Hiro and it's uh, just started so we go straight into it and then we can have a look at the draw after the game if there is any time. So uh, players have uh, selected their decks that they have to keep for the whole cut can't swap decks anymore from this point and we have uh, some surprising choices well not so much for Hero because uh, he did win the last friendly open event with Gravitra Crossing but for Gabriel we have Stark Fidity and I have a strong suspicion this was chosen because of uh, the new pack being released so we see if the Krag is played in this deck it's uh, had quite a lot of success in recent times. So we have uh, Summer Harvest not getting the most value here against Heir to the Iron Throne. Recon was uh, set up so very nice to sacrifice him for something bigger and we have Rob and Wyman both in play and a very crucial milk here on Daisy who is a um, very strong character with Renown usually but uh, yeah, milking her if there is no Winterfell just reduces her strength to zero, so she is basically useless in challenges. Let's see if there is another heir to the Iron Throne, maybe to get uh, something else for her next round. And for Greyjoy, Alanis, so uh, some good draw already. We have uh, Gorald who can potentially stand, we have uh, Chad. So Stark does nothing in round one, and let's see if Greyjoy can trigger the crossing. Rob defense, but it's not going to be enough against those uh, Iron Fleet scouts. Mm, and taking the dupe. Uh, Gregor does play Mercullis, we saw that in the last uh, friendly open uh, game. And Gorald misses, so not going to stand. But it's still going to be enough to get crossing red. Power challenge with this guy gets plus two and then... Oh no, uh, it's just plus one for the Iron Fleet scout, so Wyman can defend it if he likes. Question is, does he try to defend Intrigue? Doesn't. Could potentially kill Daisy, right? But uh, <laughs> they really want to be killing off characters with this kind of board and uh, that's a good pull here Edert. and this one he does defend and now tricks from Greyjoy So not that much power gained. Now this is pretty conventional. It's the kind of deck that uh, Argento for instance likes to play. Lots of uh, renown, big guys and it may not be a deck that's trying to exploit the Krag. I guess we'll see soon. We have the Maiden in round 2 and uh, missing with heads and spikes. If you do play the Krag, some plots have to go towards that, right? You have to pretty much play Storm of Swords and the characters tend to be a, a bit different. You play Alisane, you play uh, Grey John, Amber and uh, yeah, I don't play Stark that much so I can tell you from the top of my head here if uh, uh, Rob is restricted, right? So I'm not sure what uh, Alisane is at, at the moment, what her situation is. I think she might be in a pod but not on the the general restricted list. More recon, a stand location and we have a card in shadows which could be uh, Mira could also be small folk mob which we've seen in this type of deck before and that's decent enough for instance sacrifice Daisy who is now pretty much useless get a, a pretty big body in and Greyjoy gets a location which uh, draws more for Alanis
And here comes Baron. I was going to say the the key characters in some great crossing decks are of course the little Theon who is great on the first challenge and then Cor Balon, he's difficult to defend on the third one but uh, we saw in that friendly open final that uh, Hero likes to play this version of Balon who can uh, take a card from the discard pile also yeah, works out fine with crossing and uh, <laughs> at the moment could take fast Eddie of course his um, ability yeah, he goes away, so you can't keep the renown. But he, if he attacks with another character, you can keep that, at least. Miro, I guess, was going to try to blank Balon, and the key fanatic trigger here. And now it's a problem, right? You can't really do military, even though the board is uh, looks on the weak side because. Uh, Balon's ability just puts in Ezart. Then you get him killed. So I suspect it's more defense here for Stark. Wait for a better chance. And this doesn't look like the kind of deck that will play Winter Plots. So I wonder she, if she goes back. Maybe one or two. So, uh, yeah, quite easy to include a, a Winter Festival. Or maybe the Withering Cold. If you do play Core Rob and Wyman, who can sacrifice on demand, maybe the Withering Cold is an option. And against Crossing would be alright. But then, uh, mm, half a chance that uh, Gabriel might have played that already if he had it in the deck. And now what gets taken for claim? Daisy? Mm. So no second there. a card for Wyman, there is a stand for Rob, but also for Gorold Good Brother because he hits the hard tree grow. Quite fortunate I would say because we have two already in play and uh, two other economy locations plus uh, Northern Armory, so I'm guessing that's most locations already seen now. Uh, does it matter though is the question. Doesn't seem like there is enough uh, there was enough defense anyway. Yeah, it just makes it slightly easier for uh, crossing now to do power first and then to intrigue with uh, Alanis with her boost. I mean, uh, that one as well. Mmm, superior claim as well. So that speeds things up. No power to take from the faction card though. And it looks like Balon's ability might go unused here. There was a chance for Edart to attack as well. Get some extra renown, but it does go on characters, which is maybe not ideal. In case uh, here of here is a reset. And also, if there's no real need, you might want to keep him there, right? at him next time when you're close to winning. <laughs> yeah, marshalling him from hand would have blocked that plan, but uh, there, there goes another copy. <laughs> Standing quarreled with that trigger, but it's still enough for Gabriel to win dominance. Now there is uh, power to steal, so things are getting dangerous. And it's not a board ready to play Murgulis here. Well, <laughs> you could, but then you don't know 
what the reason situation is on the other side. Okay, Winter Festival. So Mira does go back into shadows. Losing some icon, but uh, she can try to blank Balon this round. Coral has been surprisingly useful as well. It's gained a lot of renown so far. And uh, Gabriel forced to go first again. Now that uh, is kind of interesting. You lower, of course, the odds for uh, or the, the strength of Iron Blade Scout. Well, not the worst thing. Doesn't stop crossing. It's not triggered. But it's alright, we have a milk for balance, so no need to blank him, and Mira can come in to blank Gorold, which now slows down Granger quite a lot, depending on what is applied here, of course. Is there another strong character that uh, potentially has renown? Looks like it. Hmm, Justian. Well, Mira can't stop him. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, an awkward si system chair. What's the situation here? So character without attachments. I guess uh, you have some counterplay with Winterfell, but not this round because there's winter plots on both sides. But it is possible to just uh, oppose. If you get Mira out of shadows, you uh, do it after or Retriever has uh, started people. Uh, she has started anyway, so can get her. And then you blank Theon as well. But looks like it might be another strong ground here for Greyjoy. And then whatever Stark's reset is, we might have to see it. Going for power. I guess uh, expecting to stand everyone with uh, Rob. Not exactly the, the strongest challenge, right? It can just be defended. Although crossing needs to be a little bit careful not to spend all the characters. We need to attack back and l uh, let's it go completely. I guess this one as well, since there is only one Intrigue Icon. Then I think uh, Wyman might sacrifice a Recon or kill him just to stand everyone. Hopefully no Fanatic. the plan. Is it Coralt or is it Theon? It's Theon. So I guess she does military since uh, everyone will stand. She's just strong enough to win against the Chads. 
So I guess one of them opposes here and then gets taken for claim. Or you could just win on defense as well. Yeah. Okay, now Fanatic. And now let's see what the damage is coming from the other side. What's the order? So you have one intrigue icon, the question is do you try to win with that or not? If not, then you spend that first. We do not saw it was discarded, so if uh, there has to be some kind of unopposed challenge, you can probably risk it. Now that spends a big uh, power icon here with Wyman, but I think Probably Gabriel has calculated that there is no hope really of uh, defending the other two challenges successfully. These two, of course, have stalled now. And I think Mira has to defend, otherwise Seastone Chair will trigger. And if you kill the Chad, that leads to unopposed power. Hmm, kills Mira. Yeah. I was going to say, if there are no more winter plots, maybe, maybe you kill her, right? Since she isn't uh, going to re-trigger. And now there won't be an unopposed challenge here, because Theon is blank and there's only one stealth. Can still win by five, though. <laughs> Keeps uh, getting gathered in various ways. Um, Summer as well would have been a good top deck, I think, with Mira into that pile. Okay, so more renown here for Gorald. We have uh, Crossing, we have Power Claim, and from the other side we have Winter Festival. So ends in 10 7. And the problem is, Greyjoy will get to 15 sooner than Stark does here with this board, so... Ah, but this is not the worst card to have. I was uh, wondering about the reset. Wyman and Rob can survive the Harris together, but... Uh, yeah. If you want to keep all the power on Gorald, it's going to be Gorald and the two or Montrevers, perhaps. Which means Intrigue Icon is also gone. That's uh, tricky. Can't keep Alanis with Gorald. 12 power after the Heads on Spikes hit. And he's prepared to play on here. 7-7. Seven, seven. Loses Gorald, but uh, if there's no more Intrigue Icons, then he wouldn't have threatened a crossing trigger at any point without Alanis, so 
Mm. Let's change things a, a little bit. Decent stuff coming in from Stark, especially the non-kneeler can do a free challenge now without spending anything. And from the other side we only have dupes. Which helps with Morgulis in the plot deck but doesn't help with the board state and here she is, okay. Yeah, she's going to be a problem. Stops her up stand as well. And Theon now is not going to be blanked, so threatening that system chair trigger. Let's put an attachment on Rob, so that pre uh, stops him being killed. Free challenge, but to be honest, it's pretty worthless here. It's just going to be unopposed, I think, and then uh, Theon maybe gets claimed. I don't think Rachel will uh, consider Morgulis for the rest of this game now. Or if he does, maybe he can claim the other guy. I'm guessing just making the calculation here exactly uh, how to do the challenges back, whether it's uh, possible to oppose this. That doesn't seem to be any penalty, so I would just leave it. Well, okay, wins on defense, protects his dupes. She uh, has that, she could have stood a little bit, but uh, not against these two. They can defend against stealth. But now, Stark attacks anyway. Okay, so some interfell on this one, maybe. Otherwise, I think system chair kills uh, the standing Alice sign here. We won't get superior claim in this one it seems so I would uh, use Winterfell on this one to stop uh, the claim replacement then you can claim the reducer or Arya's dupe Post intrigue, no either to hit this time. Mm, that's nice, that's a good play here. Stops the stealth, which means uh, stops the crossing trigger altogether. <laughs> and hence judgment the lesson, okay. Uh, so he can do a challenge, but it's Rob is just going to defend and doesn't matter for dominance. So I guess that's it for this round. And surprisingly Stark stays ahead. And now empty hand and creature uh, has kept both dupes. Do you still fancy your chances here now that uh, 
It's not going to be another nightmares. Or do we play Morgulis? We play Winter Festival and it misses. Okay, let's summer feast. Needs a good top deck. Otherwise, it's a wasted plot. But it does block Winter Festival, which is pretty nice. And uh, this time, Grager goes first at uh, Alisane free attack. Not what you want to see. And Winterfell this, this round is useless because there is a winter plot on the other side and uh, summer for Stark. If there's uh, three gold to spare. No, it doesn't bother. And what does Scratch a Crossing play in Shadows? Hagen's daughter, maybe? Well, a few more characters that give you some chance of defending, but it's not great. And what now against the system chair? Or more to the point, what does it uh, do? Does it kill Rob? It's the biggest character with... Oh, it can't kill Rob because he has an attachment, sorry. Alisane, the non-nealer, or do you take Arya? Remove her uh, icon. Alisane, I would say. There is actually three gold to spare. So, uh, but uh, if he's going to do intrigue, can't defend him anyway. Ah, it was Grey Ghost, makes sense. So, yeah, that's going to make it pretty much impossible to defend the last challenge as well. Can you make it unopposed? There's three stealth characters and uh, Grey Ghost, you could if you wanted to do it. And I guess that's a decent idea. You can put Asha in, she stands back, and uh, Vendemir. River instead, and uh, do we have superior claim? We do not. That would have won the game. Thirteen. So with Winter Festival, it's game over. However, Stark still has a chance to do a power challenge back. And what's the strength situation? Ten on defense, and we have yeah, we have more than enough and the stealth character. So seems like we might be going into another round. And I don't think Greyjoy will mind. He's going to grab another card for Late Summer Feast in this process. And then two plots, so still have that Morgulis as a backup plan and uh, you have uh, whatever the, the last plot is. I can't really guess. Might be Rise of the Kraken or Maybe it's we take Westeros actually. It's a wins initiative almost for sure. And 
and I don't think military can be done here. Or yeah, it would tie dominance if Rob did military. Doesn't bother. Twelve twelve. But I think uh Greyjoy might be an initiative here. <laughs> risky. You could gamble, take the reducer, hope to get something better, but then if you're not drawing a character, it's uh, backfires basically. But the most important thing is we take Westeros wins initiative, and uh, yeah, I can't imagine that uh, all of Greyjoy's challenges here could be stopped. I think it's enough to get to 15, but 6 rounds after both players played quite aggressively with lots of power gains, so yeah, very interesting. And, uh, Gabriel doesn't have it. I think we might be finishing pretty quickly because they are in a hurry. It was a bit of a struggle to schedule this match apparently during the week. So we have uh, here our first uh, semi-finalist and uh, we can have a look at the draw. Uh, hopefully everything is correct. So uh, uh, the other pairing in this top half is Mog against Superduck. And then we have Radek and Argento. That's uh, two uh, extremely strong players that I believe are playing uh, next. Should be Tuesday evening, so let's say tomorrow if I get this uploaded uh, pretty soon. And on the bottom we have uh, Alex against Floydos. So that's uh, another interesting one, and um, I'm not sure exactly what, what the schedule is for that, but uh, if I have time I will try to get all of them, or at least most of them, then we'll see what happens uh, with the final rounds here. Yeah, so uh, just to, to be clear, of course, whoever wins this uh, event 5, is the overall winner of season 9 of the friendly open series so it's going to be one of these eight players and that's all we had for you today thanks for joining me and see you next time